what we'll first do is we will visit the course platform as well as the platform for the NUSSD. And I request all of you to register as users. The course platform is called courses.metastudio.org. The second place is called studio.tis.edu. So these are the two important uh, places where we're going to interact today, tomorrow, as well as throughout the lifetime of this project. Apart from that, also keep a bookmark of another site, osm.org. OSM stands for Open Street Map. There is one more site we're going to work with that's called fieldpapers.org. Those of you who are not part of this course should certainly visit all these places and join us. I'm telling you every citizen has a role to play in this project. You just tell us what skills you have, then we'll find out uh, a role for you. Um, uh, what you would do is, you would go and uh, register on the first three sites. OSM and the field papers, you can take an account on OSM, then the same ID can be used on fieldpapers.org. You have to do two things, one is register, and then you will receive an email for confirmation, so confirm it as well. Just in case you don't immediately see a confirmation mail, please do check in your spam folder. And uh, at any point you notice that uh, the colleague next to you is not pushing forward, then you become the mentor for him. So we work in a very peer-to-peer -peer environment. The help should come immediately from each other. Some of you may have heard about Moodle. So people have rebuilt the course delivery platform as well as the course maker platform, and that is called EDX. So one of the interesting things that you would notice is that in most of our course, while you are doing, most of the domains that we are going to use will have org as an extension instead of .com. That tells you a lot in the sense that all of them are community efforts and they're not efforts of a company. So all the software, the greatest software that we're using for almost every purpose is all not owned by any particular company. It's all what you call creative commons. The software that we are going to give you is called the Learning Studios, which is customized just for this course. Usually, Knowledge Lab makes a DVD which is good enough starting from primary school to the graduate level. So this is the DVD. In place of that DVD, what we have done is we have customized it just for the digital literacy course. And the operating system that we are using for this course should be GNU Linux operating system. So this is the symbol. The Linux is the kernel, which is the most popular one, and the GNU is the entire tool chain that powers the operating system. So this is very popular, right? All of you know what it is? So why are we insisting on this browser? It's like Chrome or Firefox. Both of them are free browsers. The other interesting thing is that the best of best internet technology works on only these browsers. Because we are using HTML5, which is the latest HTML uh, technology, and we're also using a lot of SVG and uh, various kinds of JavaScript, and also video objects, because we, we want a multimedia courseware, right? And that's the reason why we want to make sure that the experience is good. And the next bit of software we're going to use is called Audacity. Uh, Audacity is a studio for sound recording, as well as sound editing. And the next one is uh, it's called LibreOffice. Libre essentially means free. That will replace your uh, Microsoft uh, Office suite. So we'll be using uh, Office for two purposes. One, of course, to type uh, both Indian language as well as English. And if you want to make some presentations, you can also use the LibreOffice for presentations as well. And then we also have an online studio for making maps. The moment uh, you have very good maps for the country, you have a direct correlation to the country's state of affairs. If a good map means the country is well developed. India, unfortunately, doesn't have very good maps. Uh, only the cities are well mapped, but the moment you go to, uh, for example, a place called Talasari or uh, Ambad, you know, none of those roads are mapped. So that is the reason why what we're going to do is, in this course, 
The students are going to make maps. And today, you're going to make the maps. You don't have to install anything. All that you need is a Firefox browser or Chrome browser to, to work with. And the next one is called another very interesting studio called Inkscape. It's like a desktop publishing kind of uh, thing. You can actually design covers for books, posters, banners, visiting cards, and whatnot. You can actually visit uh, the gallery of Inkscape to see what are the kind of things that people have made using Inkscape. Uh, the proprietary colleague of Inkscape is uh, called CorelDRAW. The other is uh, Adobe Illustrator. So Inkscape is a complete uh, uh, non-proprietary free version. And the, and the next one is called the GIMP. It's also quite popular. It's called the GNU Image Manipulation Program. So where you can edit pictures or photographs. And then this is an entry-level video editing application, OpenShot. And this is what we use for nonlinear video editing. And then edX is the platform that we're going to use for this whole course. In fact, right now, I'm using edX to play this course online. And next, of course, is the Meta Studio that we are building uh, for integrating education and research in India, particularly. So we're going to use it for a lot of purposes. One of the most important purpose right now is that uh, the studio.tis.edu, the platform that you have just registered, uh, is run on Meta Studio. But now all the software that we have started using is called free software. If a software is distributed or sold without any restrictions on usage, that's the first condition. Which means that sometimes people give you, OK, this software is OK for education, not for business. OK, somebody says that, OK, I'll give you uh, this software only for use for one person and not for everybody else. If you have such restrictions, then that's not free software. And the second condition is if the user can know how the software is made. That's very critical. Because we want to produce a nation of makers, not consumers. And therefore, it's very important that the citizens know how to repair the tools that they're using. For software, the nuts and bolts include the source code. So unless the source code is available, it's not possible to take it to a garage. And the geeks can't help you unless the source code is given to you. OK, so that's the reason why the, nothing is a free software if the source code is not available. And the third condition is the user can make changes to the software. And then if the user has freedom to share it with anyone, that's very important. Like we have already, we are going to give you uh, two, two DVDs to all of you. All right? With the condition that you will share it with everybody else. So the reason why we managed to customize an operating system and make it suitable for just this course is because they gave us the freedom to customize it. If you are using a proprietary operating system, they won't let you customize it. And that is the freedom that we take from free software. So if all these four conditions are satisfied, then and only then the software is called the free software. Otherwise, it's not free software. So free software is nothing to do with all these four conditions. We, did we talk about price? No. So what does it mean? Free software does not mean free of charge. Free refers to the freedom and not price. So we are actually talking about mukta software and not mufta software. It gives you an idea about one important thing. Just as this NUSSD program is about social change, free software is also about social change. It's a political movement, it's a social movement, it's a cultural movement. It is very little to do with technology. However, they also make very good technology. The only operating system that has no virus problem is this. And that's the reason why 70% of all the servers of, that are used on the internet run on this operating system. As we ask other people to use computers, we should better tell them, use something good. Use something virtuous, use something ethical. Use something that has a political and a cultural message. Sharing, making, and seeking so that everybody participates in a big social change. In fact, most of the 99% of supercomputers in the entire world run on the same operating system. So many of your mobiles are already running on it. So you can imagine the reach of, of this operating system uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the whole world. So it's a very uh, interesting kind of a change that is actually happening. And actually, that is the reason why our lab, called the Knowledge Lab, 
is spelt with G. Why? Because the program started with this project called the GNU project that started uh, more than 30 years ago. And today, uh, this operating system is all over the world. And it's available in every language of the world. You remember, uh, we called this whole platform that is given to you as a learning studio. So children can learn, citizens can learn while they make things. As creators of the content themselves, their learning is lifelong. It's impossible that such a, such a person who has made something will ever forget. So you understood the essence of digital literacy program that we have designed. It is a maker's program because we want to create change in the culture of the youth. We want to tell that the youth can be makers, they're not just consumers. If they want to, of course, this skill is very important for them so that they're confidently getting into any, any uh, organization and then start serving using their own talent. Let me take you to uh, uh, NUSSD studio.tis.edu. This is the place. And uh, I will take to, for example, GSP College Thalassery. So this particular page is made by, and this picture is also taken by one of the students. So what they do is they're already creating these wiki pages and they're putting the information out there. If you go to the files that they have uploaded, you will see a lot of interesting stuff. So somebody has made a uh, poster here. Somebody has uploaded an audio file, as you can see here. Some of them are pictures. Some of them are written in English, and some of them are written in Marathi. They have actually uh, nicely visualized. So what they have done is they have made banners, they made posters, they have made visiting cards. So let me give you a very brief idea about what happens when you go to uh, studio.tis.edu. Once you log in, you will go to the home of the site. So what you could do is, you could go to your own name. You will see your name. So that is my name. Once you go into your group, if you create a page, that will be yours. If you upload files, those files will be for you. Now let me tell you, that's the only assignment we are doing as far as this course is concerned. This course has no exams of the kind the traditional exams. If they made a poster, they have to upload the poster here. Suppose he has designed the book cover, he'll upload the book cover on the, on the site. And the other thing, suppose if he has made, <clears throat> let us say, um, mapping of a particular place, then what he will do, he'll take a screenshot of the page where he has done it, and then he'll upload that screenshot, and that is the way how the grading is to be done. So we have absolutely no uh, question answer kind of examination. Because why? This is a skill-based activity. So the, the traditional model of uh, examinations don't work here. All that you have to do is make sure that they, they understand uh, what they're doing, they have developed the skill, and they're able to use it. Gone are the days where children can work with just an office software. Like you know how to type in Word, okay, you can work in spreadsheet, you can make presentations using powerless, pointless presentation. Okay, that is called PPT. PPT is called powerless, pointless talk. So if the students make the presentations, there is some learning happens. So that's the reason why what we are actually doing is we are trying to create a kind of an uh, environment where a uh, lot of making and learning happens. Here, uh, remember one thing. We are not doing any of the course based on the application name. So audacity is not what you're learning. You're learning sound recording, sound, recording sound, editing. sound editing for a particular purpose, and also maybe transcribing. So uh, the application is not as important as the skill that you learn. In fact, it is not correct to use a brand name in the curriculum. On this site, after the page and the file, you also see a forum. OK? So the forum is the place where the, the, the children can participate in discussions. So within that college, they'll be able to uh, take care of uh, all the activities. So we're also building a lot of other features onto the college group so that uh, you'll be able to, for example, take attendance on the same college group. You'll be able to plan your entire calendar of which day is what course. So this platform is going to be used for a few purposes. One, 
you're going to upload all the work that you do on the site using the file model. And once they complete it, that assignment is over. They get full marks. There's nothing like, you know, he gets only 90% or 20% or something like that. So we will, we, that is the reason why we may be using certain applications, but the emphasis is not on the application, but emphasis is on the skill. Why? Skills are transferable. Once you learn on one application, you'll be able to use the other application as well. If you know how to browse in uh, Firefox, you'll be able to use Chrome as well. The free browser also gives you the guarantee that the browser doesn't track your history. Whereas if you are using a proprietary browser, they may be actually tracking you as well. You won't know. So that's one of the important revelations that have come from the recent uh, Snowden's uh, revelations. So you should be aware of the politics that happen using the digital technology as well.